friend James McCormick, between the two of us, we have more than 30 years experience representing homeowners associations in Southern California. And unfortunately, we deal with a lot of community managers that are stuck handling burdensome document demands from homeowners. How many of you guys have had to deal with a homeowner in one of your communities that requests documents like way too much? Yeah. Well, we're about to give you the best part of your day, and we're about to make the energy level in this room a lot higher because we're going to fill your toolbox this morning with a lot of tips that you can use to better serve your communities and deal with harassment from owners. So, can I get a good morning one more time? Good morning. Last session before lunch, so we're going to rock and roll. We've got about an hour of time. When we started to put this together, we quickly realized that we could spend far more than one hour talking about harassment from owners. So we're focusing this hour specifically on document demands from homeowners, and we want this to be an interactive session. We've got prizes up here that we'll be throwing out to you guys, so feel free to raise your hand and get involved. Oh, can you, can you go along on that one? I, I, I would definitely hit someone if I tried to throw that one. <laughs> we'll see, though. We want you guys to be involved, but if you've got a question or answer pertaining to something that is not document related, save it for our Q&A at the end so that we can stay on task for what we're trying to accomplish. This program is the brainchild of a sleepy association that I've represented for many years that typically spends about $400 a year on legal counsel. Somehow over the last 14 months, these lovely homeowners and their community manager, I believe, is in the room. I don't know if she's still here. I'm not going to call her out and embarrass her, but <laughs> Too late. She, this poor woman and I have been through um, a wonderful path, I use that term loosely, with a gentleman named, names have been changed to protect the innocent, Ricky the Record Requester. <laughs> so, today we're going to follow Mandy Manager as she deals with crazy burdensome requests from people like Ricky Record Requester, and um, as you know, abuse comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, I love this laundry list here. Sometimes you wonder if the owners even realize that you're a human being, right? So the presentation today is specifically for community managers, but if you're a business partner or you're a homeowner, um, we welcome you to stay and be part of the presentation because you're going to be learning the law on responding to document demands. So I'm going to turn the floor over to James now, who's going to discuss the definition of civil harassment. So. How many of you have felt harassed by abusive homeowners? Hold on a second. I heard some giggling there. <laughs> I know. Wait, get your minds out of the gutter. All right. A lot of times people forget that an attorney representing a homeowner has the right to make a record request on behalf of that owner. So if you receive a record request from a homeowner's attorney, they stand in the shoes of the owner and have the right to those documents. One other takeaway before I move forward with the fraudulent information. When um, an owner is constantly demanding information from you, it's important that you always remember you have the right to charge a reasonable rate for your time to provide the information. $10 um, is considered a reasonable rate, up to $200 per request. And the owner can be forced to look at the documents in the association's place of business or a mutually agreed upon location. And you have the right to charge for redacting costs and photocopying costs. A lot of times um, there's some confusion as to what you can do related to that. So I want to make sure that you all understand that if you've got somebody that's burdensome, as long as you give the member information first that you're going to be charging them and letting them know what that reasonable amount of money is going to be, and they agree to it, then you can send them an invoice for those records. So while Ricky looks innocent, let's talk about what happened with Ricky. Ricky was a candidate in his homeowners association's recent election, and big shocker, Ricky didn't win the election, and he was not appointed to the board by the membership. And he believes that obviously the reason for this is because the community manager and the board blocked him from being on the board and counted the ballots incorrectly. So the question is, is he entitled to review the ballots? He is. There are, are two different paths that you can take to the review of the ballots. Path number one is a ballot recount, which is extremely expensive, and almost always when I get the message from an owner, they're demanding a recount immediately. But there's a difference between inspecting the ballots and demanding a recount. 
inspecting the ballots. You can charge the owner for the time if those ballots are with the inspector of elections office and the inspector of elections is passing out a cost to the association for their time with those documents. But an actual ballot recount, especially if there was a professional inspector of elections during the actual um, election, is extremely expensive because the inspector of elections is just entitled to charge that owner their hourly rate for getting those documents. One of our clients is in the process of restating their bylaws to get rid of cumulative voting. And since the concept of cumulative voting is something that I consider very scary, I thought I would take the opportunity this month to help you understand exactly what cumulative voting is and why you should get it removed from your governing documents if it exists in your community. Cumulative voting is a concept that it exists in ancient governing documents only to protect the developer until the bulk of homes are sold out in the community. 